I think when we started, um, we we was we were out, we were we were beat. We were very optimistic, had very high hopes, and we still are. We've evaluated ourselves and pointed out where we fell short in I registered and where we did really well. And that whole process will inform our later campaign, our get out of the vote campaign. So it's been it's been it's been a good start. Why did you want to use social media specifically to engage people? It allowed us to be a bit more targeted in what we're doing and to reach more people. We wouldn't have been able to travel around the country and get voices that are not represented on social media to participate and right. to get their views to inform the conversation. Did you feel like it was um, easy or difficult to convince people to speak to social media if they're not already familiar with it so much? Um, I think a lot of Ghanaians who are offline know about internet. They know about Facebook. What we're facing as the project goes on is, is back to availability of devices and the internet. We want more groups who are underrepresented in the Ghanaian community online to be online. But our issue is, you know, infrastructure. Right. So who uh, who are the people in these groups that you're talking about? Youth groups, like rural youth, especially rural young women. Um, the physically right. challenged, because they tend to be the poorer, the more underrepresented. People who right. are in um, excluded areas, for instance, people who are in the border regions of Ghana, especially in the north. Um, anyone who is basically urban poor, although we we know that more Africans are accessing the internet through their devices, so um, these are the voices. You know, prisoners. We would like to do some work with prisoners. We'll be doing that because they'll be voting the, for the first time this year. So, um, from your experience, most of the people were were really willing to talk to you and yes. um, register. Yes, Kobe, will you speak about your experience on the ground? Thanks, people kind of thing to say no to picture taking and at times video shots. The students especially were really, really much interested in the whole thing and mm -hmm. they didn't really hesitate their shots being taken. But the old folks, some were really interested because they thought their pictures would be in magazines, on the internet, and people would get to know their situation. In all, it was cool. Most people were really interested in being Saint online. What about with the actual biometric um, system of registering? Did that pose any concern for people? I went to one of the polling stations and there were a few challenges there with regards to the biometric registration. But I think a lot of education went on as to it's not posing any threat. A lot of education, like Kobe said, went on. We did our part in social media. We did our part on the ground. The Electoral Commission did some work, as well as other uh, civil society organizations. How much do you think you got these people who weren't online before to go online? Our engagements with people, kind of get them online, it doesn't end at high register. Yes. It goes all the way through to elections. Yes. So, so we can only grade ourselves on that in January 2013. Maybe Sharifa will also share um, what she thinks about the whole project. She heard about Ghana Designs and I registered online. And yeah. I have a very funny story actually about that. Um, so I, I'm a Ghanaian. I was born in Ghana, but I lived in Canada, I lived in Saudi Arabia. It's really quite random. But basically, <laughs> I actually heard about Ghana Decides um, via Facebook. A friend posted a link to your Mashable article, um, the initial <laughs> one. And I read it and I was like, OK, this is amazing. I looked into them. Um, and sort of met up with them when I once I arrived in Accra. Um, but in sort of weeks before that, I was communicating with them online via Twitter. And they actually were able to help me answer some questions that I had about registration because I'm a dual citizen. So I was like, okay, I get back uh, just in time, the last week of biometric registration. Can I register? Um, so I tweeted to ask them. And basically, we had a Twitter conversation about um, what I had to do to register. I'm now sort of getting involved with them. I got to read about it from North America and now I'm here getting to see it firsthand and definitely some really cool things going on with regards to social media and activism in Ghana right now. Compared to your experience in Canada mm -hmm. versus um, the experience in Ghana in terms of getting out the vote and getting people interested in registering, what would you say is the biggest difference, if any? 
With regards to specifically social media, obviously, uh, Kina mentioned infrastructure, so you're not going to be able to target as many people through the internet as maybe you would be able to do in Canada or the States per se. Um, but there's actually a big difference um, in an interesting way. Canada specifically has pretty poor youth voter turnout. Whereas in Ghana, that's not the case at all. I told you about how I was communicating with them about registering, um, and they told me the place to go to register, what I needed to do. I went there, the line was ridiculous. Everyone wants to vote, everyone wants to um, sort of put their, um, put their political opinion out there. Um, and yeah, I feel like there's a much bigger appreciation of democracy in Ghana than maybe you would see otherwise. Right. How many people are there who technically can vote and how many people were you able to register? I think the people who can technically vote 10% of the population to so that currently stands around 13 to 14 million. And the people who registered, I think, stand now at 12 million. 12.75 million. Like Sharif was saying, voting and exercising one's democratic franchise is very, very, very high this year. Um, we are it's, we're projected um, to have a very close election with a difference of perhaps 4%. So a lot of people wanted to register and they did. And also in Ghana, besides your passport, it's the only other national ID accepted everywhere. We don't have a national ID card. So a lot of people, you know, people who even said, oh, I'm not going to vote, went to register. And young people who didn't say, oh, they said, oh, I don't want to vote. We said, you just go out there. Get your ID card, and once you get your ID card, then you can decide, of course, we do a get out of the vote campaign. So registration, for the most part, went very, very well. Um, there were some incidences of intimidation and abuse, but that was, you know, the political parties and their people acting out. But generally, Ghanaians kept it peaceful. Do you expect the majority of those who registered to go out and vote? It's or? going to be a high turnout. Ghanaians typically have over, I think, 65%, 70% voting, and this would be high as well. So is there anything else that you want to add that we haven't covered yet, or um, something that you really feel is very important to this project? One thing which is really important to our project is our engagement with people across the country. And it's, for us, it's very important that we reach to people in all the 10 regions of Ghana. We want to get their problems, we want to get their opinions online. What is the next step for Ghana Decides? What are you planning next? We launched our Get Out the Vote campaign, which will probably be around September in time for December. We are going around the country meeting groups. We are getting our work with organizations done, our training done. We'll be covering every campaign, as many of the political rallies, the presidential debates, plus we're trying to get the candidates Either we'll do interviews with them and live stream it, or perhaps we'll do a Twitter chat. But we are also covering the campaign until the until September comes when we launch our Get Out the Vote. This is the first project of its kind in Ghana, so it's so important to us that we succeed. And we've been appealing to all volunteers and to social media users. This project is funded by Star Ghana. It's run by a Ghanaian team. And the idea is to improve upon the transparency and the accountability and responsiveness of government systems and also to enhance the interaction between the citizenship and parliament and the executive, hence the election thing. Is there anything else? We yeah. thank you so much. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. This has been incredible.